Okay, um, the next thing I'm going to be working on is actually Sheldon. Um, I'm going to be putting on, working on his actual shell part today, or in this particular episode, while the uh, little bitties are cooking. Um, the colors that I'm going for for this are kind of natural earth tones. So I'm pulling out these colors from my paintbrush stash. This is just a dark brow brown. I think this is number three, blushing, something like that. It's kind of an orangey red color. This one's raw sienna. And this one's eyelid purple. And this, this one's a different darker brown. Um, and then for my pigment powders, these are the ones that I'm going for for this. Al Carrot Gold, Reptar. Reptar is one of the ones that kind of changes colors from kind of a goldish orange color to a greenish color. Torched Copper and then a Black Cherry. So what I want to do is to make up four colors of paint so that I can combine in different streaks on this guy rather than just one um, color or one dish rather. Um, so I'm going to start with the lightest one so that I can use the same paintbrush for everything. So we're going to go from light to dark around the edges. And I don't want very much thinner in this because these colors have to go on relatively thick, like way thicker than you'd ever, 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 ever in a million years use on a Reborn. So this is the yellow, our torched Rest of raw sienna. I put too much thinner in, so it's already going to take a lot of paint to fill this up. I'm going to try to do um, kind of a swirl on my snail, if that makes sense. Of course the snail shell is swirly itself, but I'm going to make it kind of fade from a lighter color into a darkest color. So the lightest color is going to be the thickest part of the shell, and the darkest color is going into the creases. Um, to me that just seems natural on something that the creases would be darker, and that the most growth would be the lightest see-throughest bits. So we'll probably use the most of this color mixed with the next color down. So this next color is going to be a combination of two colors, just so I can get the right color, or maybe even three, just so I can get the right shade. We want these to all end up in the same family. Well, I guess same family, so that they are they can blend from one color to another without a huge, crazy color streaks. This is an old, old jar of paint. This particular jar was one of the very first jars of paint that I got when I first started reborning eight years ago. Um, and I've never used it all. I don't use it on humans anymore. I just don't find the need for this particular color. Um, but I have been drawn to it for fantasy and it doesn't ever seem to dry out. I always try to pay attention to it once a month or so. I'd put a couple of drops of thinner in it so it doesn't dry out and crack. This Genesis paint is pretty cool like that. You don't, as long as you can keep the humidity in it and the moisture in it, it uh, it never seems to die. All right, so that one's pretty thick. Hopefully they're thick enough. Um, red. They always start with the base color from one color and move it into the next. So that goes into that, that goes into this. This is black. I don't need black. I need brown. I'm 
going to come also to this burnt umber color and add some of this as well. I want it to stay a warm brown color because that's what I'm going with is the warm tones, not the cold tones. Um, this burnt umber is a nice warm brown color. Again, never in a million years would I use these colors on an actual reborn, except for maybe this burnt umber. This is almost the texture thickness of some hair painting colors. Um, of course, just with no... There's a hair in that. Shame on it. With no pigments. We don't want sparkles in our hair. When it comes to fantasy paints, you use a ton more paint than you do with humans. Um, when I started painting with fantasy colors, then I started actually using some of the paints, using up some of the paints that I've had forever and ever and ever when I only did the human skin tones. Okay, so the last color I'm going to morph into is kind of a purpley color. To me, they just kind of, they may be at different ends of the color spectrum, but brown naturally fades into a purple. I'm not going to use a ton of this. I'm only using it in the deepest, darkest creases. It does take a lot of paint to get it thick enough for this. Otherwise you have to put on two million layers and the more layers you put on, the more fragile it becomes and the more it wants to crack. So I've discovered with fantasy paints, if you're going to do a really bright, dark color, it's better to do it in as few layers as you can. Um, and just get it on there, put it on thick and get it covered, and then cook it twice or three times after it's on there so that you don't have to worry about it um, rubbing off. We're almost there with this color. It's a really, really nice plum color. Okay, so we're going to pull back on the actual paints. Now I'm going to clean off this brush a little bit and remove some of the color so that I can add the thinning medium. I'm gonna let it absorb as much color as I can get off the brush. So I can go back and add thinning medium. You don't have to be picky about messing up your colors because you're an artist and colors mix all the time. So don't worry too much about getting a little bit of your yellow and your orange. That's where the shading comes in and that's a actually a desirable thing. So I'm going to put a little glob probably maybe a half a teaspoon worth into each of these colors just to give the pigment powders something to hook to. Now I'll go back through starting from the lightest and mix the, the thinning medium into my colors. And I'm going to add the sparkles at the same time from between one color and the next so I don't have to clean the paintbrushes 20 times. You can see that it's it's uh, mixing by the dark streaks is where it's more globuly. Alright, so now this one's pretty close to done. I'm going to put this gold color